I have talked about this subject in different messages in the past, but I think it fits the season to address it now as well. The Immaculate Conception is more than just a miracle. However, many Christians do not really understand why this was necessary. Of course, Jesus is the Son of God, so God, the Father, had to be His Father. It could not have been an earthly father. But Jesus also had to be fully man in order to be a valid replacement sacrifice to atone for our sins. Thus, he had to be born of a woman. This gives us thus in a nutshell the necessity for the Immaculate Conception or to be born of a virgin. But there is more to it. He is King of Kings. God has declared that Yeshua the Messiah would sit on the throne of David. He would inherit the kingship. Note that the throne of David is an earthly kingship. It pertains to the millennial reign and the fulfillment of God's promises. And it is vital for the recognition of the remnant of the Israelites that this be fulfilled properly and to the latter. It is separate from the heavenly kingship, which he already executes at the right hand of the Father. The expected Messiah is to be Messiah ben David, the son of David. And he is Messiah ben Yosef, the son of Joseph. Both fulfilled in one person, Yeshua. I don't want to make this video too long, so I will not read the concerning scriptures, but put them here on screen, uh, as well as list them in the description. So you can uh, study this yourself afterwards. During the time of the Babylonian captivity, Jeconiah was king of Israel. He was a descendant of David's son Solomon and an ancestor of Joseph, the earthly, adoptive father of Jesus. This can be derived from the genealogy given in Matthew chapter 1. However, Jeconiah was a wicked king. So much so that God put a curse on him and all his descendants. God said, No man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. No descendant of Jeconiah would qualify as king of Israel. So if Jesus is a descendant of Jeconiah, then how can he be the Messiah, since the curse bars any of Jeconiah's descendants from assuming David's throne? God had purposely created a situation here that made the prophecy seem impossible to fulfill. Actually, only He could make it happen. And with that, it forms proof that He has been in full control throughout all generations, starting right away with Adam. Remember, Joseph was only the legal father of Jesus, not his biological father. Therefore, Jesus was not of the seed of Jeconiah. The blood curse which would have disqualified him from a legal right to rule as king of Judah was not passed on to Jesus. But the question then remains, how could the prophecies be fulfilled in Jesus? And this is where Mary comes into the play. Mary was Jesus' only human parent. It was through her ancestry that Jesus had a birthright in the bloodline of the tribe of Judah, the line from which all kings of Judah came. The genealogy of Jesus through Mary is not through Solomon, but through Nathan, the second surviving son of King David. This we can know from the genealogy recorded in Luke chapter 3. Jeconiah was not an ancestor of Mary, and therefore the blood curse is not upon Jesus' ancestral line through his mother. However, Mary is a direct descendant of King David, so Jesus was both legally as well as biologically a son of David. So we can see how Mary's line avoided the blood curse and how through Joseph, being the legal father, Jesus was still in the royal line of David. However, does this also mean that 
that he's entitled to the kingship. In other words, can this title be inherited through a woman instead of a man, the mother instead of the father? The answer to this question can be found in the Old Testament. There was once a man in the tribe of Manasseh, Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, who had only daughters. And this was the generation that was left after the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. So with this, the family line of Zelophehad of the tribe of Manasseh would end. His daughters present this case before Moses, and he brings it before God. God establishes a law of inheritance which allowed the daughters to get their father's inheritance. This law of inheritance is still in place in most parts of the world today. However, there is a catch. The inheritance would change family or tribe if the daughters were to marry outside their own tribe. In other words, the inheritance would only be passed on through the daughter if she would marry to someone of the same tribe. Thus for Jesus to inherit the kingship from the tribe of Judah through his mother, following conditions had to be met. Mary should have to have no brothers, which was the case. Mary's father, Heli, had no sons. Mary should have to be of the tribe of Judah. And Mary should have to be married inside that tribe. And as we have seen, both Joseph and Mary were direct descendants of King David. All legal and lawful conditions were met. So, if Joseph had been Jesus' biological father, Jesus could not have fulfilled the prophecy of being Messiah. This because of the blood curse. In other words, apart from the legal conditions that were met, Joseph could never have been Jesus' biological father. It would still have disqualified Jesus' messiahship. This supports the virgin birth, and even makes it a necessity which is exactly what was prophesied. In Jesus, God became manifest in the flesh, built of the same dust we are being made of, the same building blocks. Although the conception through the Holy Spirit is indeed a supernatural event, the rest of Jesus' growth, birth, life and death follows all the laws of nature to which we are subject. It's only in recent history of mankind that we know about DNA and how these complex molecules contain our biological characteristics. And it's only very recent that we know that a child can indeed develop and grow with the genetic material of only the mother. Normally a human being has 46 chromosomes, which are like packages over which the DNA is divided. 23 of these chromosomes are from the father and 23 from the mother. And each of these 23 contain 22 so-called autosomes and one sex chromosome. The 22 autosomes contain all the information for the child to develop normally. Normally, these autosomes of the father and the, of the mother are mixed so that the child inherits characteristics of both the father and the mother. The sex chromosome supplied by the mother is always an X. That of the father is either an X or a Y. The combination of sex chromosomes of father and mother determines the gender of the child. With this knowledge, we can imagine that virgin birth is biologically possible as long as there is somehow conception. However, for a boy to be conceived, there has to be a second party, a father. Because the one chromosome that determines the male sex, the Y chromosome, is missing in the female DNA. Thus, Jesus inherited all his human characteristics from his mother, and his gender, his nature from his father, who supplied the Y chromosome supernaturally through the Holy Spirit, just as scripture declares. And that makes Jesus, in every sense, the Son of God. 
Therefore, it must be so that Jesus did not have the regular 46 chromosomes, but 24. 23 from Mary, including the X chromosome, and only one, the Y chromosome, from his heavenly father. Research done by the late Ron Wyatt has established this fact. All of this had been declared long before by God himself. In Genesis 3, verse 15, we read, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is the seed or DNA of the woman. In summary, Joseph was Jesus' earthly adopted father. God is Jesus' heavenly father. Jesus was begotten of God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary was Jesus' human mother, a young virgin who gave birth to the Son of God. The blood curse upon Joseph's line was not passed on to Jesus. Mary's bloodline was pure in that it was without the blemish of a curse. Mary had no brothers and was married to a tribe member, and thus the full inheritance of kingship would be passed on to Jesus. Only one person in the history of mankind has fulfilled all these conditions, and that is Jesus, Yeshua HaMessiah. Only God, the Father, could have orchestrated history in this specific way. And only in this way, Jesus could be both the Son of God and the Son of Man. Jesus' birth in this world as a fragile baby boy was a true miracle in every sense. May God bless you.